welcome my friends to this video as you can see on my screen right here or in your screen this is what we are talking about today gdc consultation response department of health and social care consultation on provisional registration for overseas qualified dentists published on 16th of may 2024 as we are all aware the gdc carried out a wild consultation wild <laughs> a wide consultation as regards provisional registration and this was done in may after that the findings were taken to parliament for debate and formation of a draft order so the draft order came out and now before it is passed into law the gdc has been asked to put their input i hope that's correct english but anyway, their input is required before it is finally passed into law and then we can all enjoy provisional registration, especially those of us who are waiting. So as you can see, it's a very long document. In fact, it has uh, 22 pages. But don't you worry, I'm going to break it down into 12 digestible points right now. So let's go. The response was broken down into nine major points but uh, as you can see number one they start talking about the gdc the usual things what they stand for what they expect of registrants etc etc point two they talked about the overview of provisional registration which i already covered in my other video provisional registration then they moved on to talking about how they responded the structure of their response to the draft order by parliament and then finally we get to point four point four is where there are real issues that are going to touch us as overseas qualified dentists so if i were you i would just stick around until the end so that i don't miss anything let's continue point one they start talking about how they made changes in 2023 and they restate what they stand for so as they have stated here, provisional registration will initially create an alternative route, either supporting preparation for or providing an alternative to ORE or LDS. In other words, the GDC has not yet decided whether if you go through provisional registration, you will not do ORE or LDS. So it is still under discussion, but according to the draft order, they said otherwise but we are going to get into that later and what the gdc thinks should be done in 4.7 they also point out several other issues and they also touch on the issue of indemnity cover for provisional registrants and the supervisors given that under provisional registration you are going to actually be practicing and seeing patients the patients in the uk really really love to sue dentists there is a general belief that dentists here have a lot of money that they are highly paid so suing them is some kind of business you can get money out of them whether that is true that they are highly paid and they are rich that's a matter of debate but what is known is that patients in the uk really really love to sue dentists or health workers in general but more specifically dentists so that brings in the aspect of indemnity cover so the gdc is asking the parliament to look into indemnity cover for both registrants and their supervisor and to see how this is going to be handled the second thing they touched on in this part is funding funding placements and the cost of supervision and the methods used by practices or employers for selecting provisional registrants okay this part here so the gdc is asking who is going to bear the cost because definitely there is going to be a cost will it be the gdc will it be you the dentist or will it be the clinic that you'll be practicing in especially if they have not yet decided but if they decide that you must have a placement before you are accepted in the provisional register as you know with temporary registration you have to first get the training job once you get that training job placement 
then you can apply for temporary registration. So the GDC is asking if that approach is used for the provisional registration as well, who is going to meet the cost? So this needs to be clarified in the draft order before it is finally passed into law. The GDC also raises the question of assessment models. In this point, there's a question of assessment models. According to the draft legislation, the current one, which has not yet been passed, they suggest that after the one year of provisional registration, the registrants should sit ORE or LDS as a summative exam. So the GDC is saying this needs to be changed because it can't be the only way of assessing the provisional registrant. If it is to be kept as one of the methods, it should be one of the methods. But they also suggest alternatives. For example, you could be assessed on a continuous basis. As you go through the program, you assess and then you can be determined at the end or even before the, the one year ends that you have met all the requirements for full registration and be registered. Or you haven't met the requirements for full registration, then you won't be registered. So they are suggesting ORE and LDS should not be considered the only means of accessing registrants. In fact, they go ahead and say, maybe the assessment can be done by educational providers. For example, if you are practicing in a clinic, but you are attached to say an institution that does the assessment regularly, like more how they do with trainee dental nurses. You are working in a dental clinic as a trainee dental nurse, but the institution that is assessing you is a completely different institution that provides dental nursing education. So they are saying that could also be one of the approaches. Let's continue. But before we continue, if you are getting any value from this video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Just hit that red subscribe button right now. Join the family. Turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the videos that I'm going to upload. Thank you for doing that. Let's continue. The GDC also suggests that maybe it may prove sensible for implementation to be on a limited scale or explicitly on a pilot basis. The GDC is suggesting that maybe before we implement provisional registration on a full-blown scale, we could sample it and see how it works. So we take a few dentists register them under provisional registration as a pilot cohort before it is fully rolled out. Then they moved on to say keeping the options open. The first they suggest is that there should be a range of potential delivery models at this stage. So let's come down here. Provisional registrants would be able to work in a general practice environment with the supervision provided by a specific named approved fully registered dentist working in the same practice. However, they have other suggestions. One of them is that the GTC envisions provisional registration operating more as a conversion course offered by an education or training provider. In other words, the GDC is saying, let's not restrict provisional registrants to the clinic. It could be possible that an education institution can take up these provisional registrants and train them in the way dentistry is practiced in the UK in form of a conversion course. Then once you complete the course, you are fully registered. And I think that is really great, right? Yes. Personally, I would prefer to go through that route, even though actually practicing in the clinic gives you more experience. But it could be difficult to get these clinics because most of the clinics are private. Private clinics are risk averse. So people don't want to risk with somebody who is not sure of how dentistry is practiced in the UK. But anyway, the more options you have, the better. And they go ahead to say the supervision then would be managed at the level of the institution rather than necessarily on the individual basis. One of the reasons I really like this point is consider you have a disagreement with your supervisor. The supervisor may just decide to fail you. But this would not 
easily happen if it is an institution because you could request a different supervisor if you have disagreed with your current supervisor so i think that is a really good thought out point they also suggested that blended approaches may also be appropriate with more intensive oversight of the provisional registrants to ensure that their skills are well understood and that the patient safety is rigorously protected reducing as experience is built up and there is greater confidence in the provisional registrant skills what this point simply says is that a lot of restrictions would, would be placed on you at the beginning but as you gain skills they relax a bit such that by the end of your registration period you almost have no limitations on your practice within your scope okay so we continue as i mentioned earlier the draft legislation suggests that a provisional registrant must take ORE or LDS as a summative exam before they are fully registered. GDC say, why don't we consider things like you could have both admission assessment at the outset and then you could have transitional assessment to full registration. Two assessments at the entry level and at the exit. But also they say the latter assessment, this is the exit assessment, could be experience of supervised practice and the potential for work-based assessment may provide a useful complement to summative. In other words, some kind of logbook for all the procedures you have done successfully. So maybe they would say you have to do 10 root canals, 20 fillings, 5 scaling and polishing, whatever it is. Yeah, basing on that record, again referring to the case of dental nurses, they have what they call record of experience. Every procedure they have done or they have assisted the dentist do is recorded. So the GDC is saying a similar approach could be used for provisional registrants, not necessarily an exam. Yeah, it makes sense because actually one of the reasons why we are yearning for this provisional registration, ORE is far too complicated. If we can do away with the ORE, the better. So under this point, provisional registration was part of NHS Dentistry England plan to improve the capacity and effectiveness of NHS dental provision. GDC is saying, much as this is a good plan, provisional registrants, once they become fully registered, should not and cannot be forced to work with the NHS. But they have a suggestion that one of the things you could do is to incentivize the overseas dentists. For example, you could give them visa sponsorships or you could sponsor their provisional registration period and any other incentives that can keep them practicing in the NHS. I agree with them. There is no way you can force somebody to work where they don't want. So when you read further here down, when you read here under entry, all of this part, uh, down, down here, which I'm not going to Go read word by word. If you want this document, I'm going to leave a link where you can download it so you can go through it at your own time. But the summary of the entry part is that the draft legislation right now says for somebody to qualify to be registered under provisional registration, they should be in the ORE candidate list with the candidate number. But the GDC is saying no, being in the candidate list should not be the only condition for getting provisional registration it should be open and let the gdc decide which applicant qualifies to get provisional registration and which applicant doesn't including those who are in the candidate list for ore then there is also an issue about length maintenance and renewal of the registration if you also read this part up to the end here uh, somewhere here you will find that the legislation says the registrant has one year for provisional registration and can only be renewed once. So that means you have two chances. But the GDC is saying no, that this is also restrictive. There should be a provision to pause. This is not provided for. For example, if I'm a girl and I get pregnant, of course I'm not a girl, you can clearly see that I'm a man. But if the applicant is a lady and she gets pregnant and she needs to give birth or take care of baby or whatever reason, she should have the opportunity to pause the program. She gives birth, then when she's ready, she comes back. Or you have 
pressing issue back home and you need to go home and sort it out then you should be able to go sort it out and then you come back oh in an unfortunate circumstance where you get an illness that stops you from practicing for a while that should be also reason enough to pause it so that part of pausing is not there gdc wants to have the power to be able to renew it so this is also not provided so that part also needs to be addressed before it is passed to law finally we talk about exit uh, some of these do not apply to us according to the draft legislation it appears completion of the program at the end of one year is the only exit provided but now the gdc say there should be other means of exit if you read down here all this uh, down here in fact this is the provision which they have under the draft legislation a dentist's provisional registration would cease to have effect at the end of its defined period so according to the GDC, this means that the provisional registrant would exit the regime by default at that point unless another mechanism were engaged to renew the period. However, GDC say this is also not quite perfect. So they are suggesting that one, there should be an option of the registrant to live freely. For example, if I'm in the OR candidate list and I'm doing my provisional registration, and I set my ORE and pass. I should apply to exit the program since I've already passed. The GDC is also saying if the registrant fails to meet or maintain the terms and conditions of provisional registration, they should have the power to exit them. Thirdly, if the provisional registrant continually fails progressive assessments, then this registrant should be removed from the provisional registrant register. But also, if the registrant is sharp enough like you guys who are watching this channel and you fulfill the requirements for full registration before the time allocated for provisional registration ends then you would have earned the right to obtain full registration before the expiry of provisional registration yes what do you guys think let me know your thoughts under the comment section so what do you guys think about this response of the GDC to provisional registration draft legislation by parliament? Please let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.